want to welcome everyone to this year's Falcon. We've worked hard to make it as exciting and empowering as our past events. We know it's probably not the first virtual conference you've attended this year, but we sincerely hope it's the best. Well, I think we can all agree it's been a pretty strange year. If you told me a year ago that this year you'd all be sitting at home while I'm standing in an extended reality soundstage in LA, I would have not believed it. If you told me I'd be reading a headline that says work from home becomes the new normal, CrowdStrike eats semantics lunch, analysts say, well, I may have believed that one, but I would never believe that my wife would be cutting my hair with a floby to raise money for COVID relief. It's important to keep our sense of humor in times like these but we also need to keep in mind there's been a lot of suffering and a lot of grief. We all owe a huge debt to our healthcare and frontline workers and first responders. They took on more than their fair share of the burden, especially in the first days of the outbreak. We also want to honor a group of people that are seldom recognized by their companies or colleagues. They work tirelessly to keep others safe from danger that threatens them every day. They are the IT and security professionals in our audience today. This event is dedicated to you. So please use the emojis in the lower right of your screen and give yourselves a virtual round of applause. The changes we've experienced in the past eight months have been staggering. First, the pandemic triggering economic recession combined with political and social unrest. Makes you wonder what's next. There have been many unforeseen impacts, but one is universal. And that's the sudden and overwhelming reliance on technology. Everything we used to do out in our communities and in the world, we've discovered we can do it all from the safety and comfort of our homes. Commerce, communication, medicine, socializing, and our day-to-day -day jobs. It's been life-changing for us as adults, but it's also impacting a whole new generation. Moving education online, millions of empty classrooms, parents and teachers inventing new ways to learn. We were forced to adopt these new ways of life and it hasn't been easy or pleasant. It's been exhausting, sometimes heartbreaking, but it's also been an opportunity to reassess, recalibrate, refresh, retool. Unfortunately, cyber criminals and bad actors around the world also saw an opportunity in the crisis. They prey on emotions like fear and uncertainty. They use misery to their advantage. As a result, the global attack surface became exponentially larger and harder to defend. Security and IT professionals have been on a consistent state of high alert since February, and we're still not out of the woods we're going to be hearing from a number of our customers today, traveling around the world to find out how they've been coping with the extreme conditions this year has brought us. First, let's head to New York City, which last March suddenly became the global epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's hear from Jeff Brown, the city's chief information security officer and head of New York City Cyber Command, and Kiesence Phillips, the deputy CISO for threat management. She oversees the City of New York's incident response, cyber threat intelligence, and 24 by seven security operations center. Hello, Falcon. Hello, Falcon. It's great to be with you today. New York City Cyber Command has a twofold mission. We're here to make sure that the services that New Yorkers depend on, the technology that enables those services are defended from cyber threats each and every day. And we also are charged with bringing cybersecurity to New Yorkers in ways that respect their values. I think what I appreciate about our organization is that we always think about our work as uh, in service of the services that are being provided to New Yorkers and in turn, you know, the, the residents themselves, you know, we are in service of them. Anybody involved in cyber defense, wherever you are, have to think a lot about where the technology that you've been thinking about traditionally defending, where that technology is being operated, being relied on, being 
part and parcel of the life of the person that's touching that technology. It's really powerful in New York City because, you know, the city's so vibrant and there's always, you know, something going on and you enter into the pandemic and the city sort of, the streets might be more quiet. But that doesn't mean that the people themselves don't have as vibrant a life, but they've in many ways moved that vibrant life to their interactions with each other online. Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, technology is touching people's lives more and more and more and more. We want the vision to be that New York City is the most resilient city in the world. Within the pandemic, we really realized that the systems and the environment that we've been building for the past three years helped us to almost visualize and manifest, if you will, this vision that we've been thinking about for so long. The reason why I say that is because we've built this environment to allow our responders to be resilient for the people in this city, to bring our expertise in the skill set that we have to the agencies in light of them trying to service New Yorkers in some of the most difficult times. When I think about what we have been able to accomplish in the cyber defense of the city, I also think very clearly about um, our own organization. And to me, it all revolves around March 13th. On March 13th was when the city itself um, provided guidance that the city workforce could go remote. And to me, our ability as an organization to go remote is really a component of two things. And all of it has to do with um, the vision of what a resilient city needed to be and what a resilient organization needed to be and what partners we needed to do that. So for years before March 13th, we've been working on this strategy called Defend the Defenders. In order to defend the defenders, we knew that New York City Cyber Command needed to have the strongest environment it could possibly have. And because of that, we built in the type of technology that would allow us to grab those laptops and go home and work from home. That was an incredibly proud moment for me and a really satisfying moment because as the person accountable, not just for our mission, but for the people of our organization, in that exact moment, we were able to say, because we had a vision years ago to build the right type of technical environment with the right type of technical controls, all of you can go home and be safer. And through you being safer, maybe be safer with your families, with your friends, with your community. We're all in this together. One, it's a, it's a public-private partnership. Right, so it's our allies, it's our partners, it's everyone that we work with, it's the residents that we're providing a service for. Uh, I don't think any of us can be successful on our own. And this is part of the reason why we have partnerships such as the ones we have with CrowdStrike. And I just think, you know, we are all from various walks of life. So the diversity in the public-private partnership is super important. So when we talk about we're all in this together, it's one fight, right? So we all need to move synchronously. And if the mission is to fight off the bad guy or gal, then I think we all need to be on the same page in that effort. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You hit the nail on the head. When it comes down to it, when I think about New York City and the vision to build the most cyber resilient city of the world, we can't do that by ourselves. We just can't, we won't be successful. Because technology cannot be developed nor consumed in a vacuum. And it is part of our world and it is, it's an amazing part of our world, but it comes with its risk, right? So if we're thinking about who this technology is being delivered to, I think we're all in a better place with the decisions that we make to influence how that technology is brought to the consumer. As professionals, we have always pursued defending a thing. But I think the lesson in New York City before, but certainly highlighted in the pandemic, is what we do isn't really defending a thing because people rely on those things so much. What we're doing now is defending like, a person. That's a different motivation. That's really powerful. Thanks Falcon and thanks CrowdStrike for having us today. Thank you Falcon and thank you CrowdStrike. Back to you George. That's an incredible example of the way so many organizations had to change and adapt overnight, in some cases, literally. I talked to one CIO back in the spring who I knew was pursuing a big multi-year digital transformation project. I asked him how it was going. 
he told me they had a two-year roadmap that they executed in one day in March. This is not an isolated incident. COVID-19 forced many organizations to speed up their timetables for digital transformation. Recently, we surveyed over 4,000 senior decision makers worldwide. They told us that more than half of the global workforce had already shifted to remote work as a direct result of the pandemic. And many of them are never going back. We strongly believe that today's mandatory work from home environment is the precursor of a permanent shift to a work from anywhere economy. You'll hear more about that in a panel discussion coming up where I'll be joined by a few of my counterparts, the CEOs and founders of Zoom and Slack. This economic and technology transformation is happening globally across every conceivable industry, healthcare, finance, retail, tech, government, communications, education, entertainment, and beyond. Typically, massive transformations don't occur overnight. But in the case of COVID, business and IT leaders had to act fast. Most of these transformations adopted a similar approach. Organizations had to rapidly provision fleets of new endpoints. They had to spin up new cloud workloads and authorize the use of BYOD devices and unsecured Wi-Fi. One thing a lot of organizations came to realize, for their digital transformation plans to work, they first had to embark on a security transformation. Take the cloud. It's the key ingredient of virtually every digital transformation initiative. Most of us were used to providing security for fixed assets, data centers, and physical endpoint devices like servers, desktops, and laptops. But securing the virtual equivalence of those devices requires an entirely new kind of expertise. It's a different kind of technology where you don't own the infrastructure. And people will make mistakes in the early going. You'll hear in a few minutes from our chief product officer and head of engineering, Amal Kokarni. The number one vector for breaches of cloud environments today is misconfiguration. The ones who have seen the greatest success in the massive transition to a cloud-based model have been the ones that started their digital transformation journey with a security transformation first. These organizations had already deployed a cloud-native security platform. They moved away from fossilized on-premise security solutions. So they were set for success. They could confidently close their brick and mortar facilities and send their employees home and their workloads to the cloud. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell the future. Even if I could, the lawyers wouldn't let me. But one thing is clear, it won't look like the past. Work from anywhere is here to stay. Our customer Slack did a recent study and found that among workers who are used to working from home, a whopping 72% say they prefer working from home. And 60% of those veteran remote workers say they're more productive at home than in an office. Companies are recognizing the value of letting employees choose where they work. And whether they like it or not, they're going to have a hard time putting the work from anywhere genie back in the bottle. But I believe that's what true leaders do in business and technology. They're constantly looking forward, not backwards. They want to modernize their organizations, improve their work cultures, and adopt infrastructure that supports it. That means more reliance on the cloud, more reliance on SaaS applications and platforms that are agile, that can expand or contract along with business needs, that are easy to deploy and easy to manage even when IT and security teams are also working remotely. The changes brought about by the global pandemic lit the fuse for a massive digital transformation movement. And it requires eliminating reliance on complex, fragile legacy technologies. Let's visit another CrowdStrike customer, this time in an industry that is laser focused on innovation and speed. 
please welcome Toto Wolf, the CEO and principal of the Mercedes AMG Patronus Formula One team. He's joining us trackside from Monza, Italy, and from the team's headquarter in Brackley, England. We have COO Rob Thomas, along with the international motorsports announcer and commentator, Danny Hornigold. Thanks, George. Formula One is a sport that's measured down to the thousandth of a second. It's a sport where the tiniest hesitation, the smallest of mistake, can cost you points, can cost you victories, and ultimately, it can cost you world championships. In the modern hybrid era, Mercedes, AMG, Petronas, Formula One team have been the dominant force, winning all of the World Drivers and World Constructors Championships. And as they turned up this year for the inaugural race of the 2020 season in Australia, they couldn't imagine how quickly things would change. The global pandemic struck, racing was paused, and the team very quickly had to change and adapt. To talk to us about that and the way in which the team have evolved in this time, I'm joined from Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team by COO Rob Thomas. Rob, thanks so much for joining us. Hello, Danny. It's good to be here. And Rob, of course, in this virtual world we now live in, we've got to be joined remotely as well, as I'm joined by our team principal and CEO, Toto Wolf. Toto, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Rob, it's been the most unimaginable of circumstances. I mentioned there that we turned up in Australia. What processes do we have in place? What defined the right decision at the right time? Just how challenging was it? Well, you're right, Danny. It's been an extraordinary year. And we could feel this thing building. And as it got worse and worse, we knew we were going to move into a lockdown situation. And it's like, well, how do we deal with this? None of our plans are meant for this. But as an organization, I think what we're good at, we're good at adapting to change. And we're very, very sort of flexible. But above all, our number one priority throughout all of this was the safety of our people. When we look at staying competitive and when we look at the challenges and adapting, it's not just been about the technology. And so, so I want to speak to yourself about that. A lot of people watching this may not be aware of your career prior to Formula One, where, of course, you were involved in multiple tech investment businesses. And I think if we look back at that time and your investments in tech and security firms, I just wonder... Um, as you've got to know CrowdStrike, what synergies you can see between yourselves as a team and CrowdStrike? As a matter of fact, I think we are very aligned uh, from a human side. You can see that looking at George uh, um, with, with the, all the other activities. He's, a, he's an astute racing driver um, and, and moving those machines needs, needs skill and needs adaptability. And I think this is what is at the core of our business. We are, it's not always the, the more, um, the, the faster company that wins, but it's the more adaptable company that wins. Brilliant. Thanks, Toto. Um, Rob, I just want to talk to you uh, about uh, CrowdStrike, ultimately, and, and the fact that they saw this sudden surge in cyber threats, that the outbreak took place globally, and all of a sudden there's these huge numbers being reported. How did you cope with that? All of that data that you're working so hard to protect, but also any potential threat could cause you to have to lift at some point. I think, as you rightly say, Danny, as, as the COO, I kind of like people to be here. I can get my arms around it. I can see it. I can touch it. And all of a sudden, they're gone into a world that we couldn't actually see, into this cloud where a lot of our data was put. And before that, we'd been really nervous of the cloud. We'd not really used it before because we were just concerned about it. And suddenly, it's all gone. Now, what gave me, and I know gave the organization, a huge amount of comfort was knowing we had CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike with this umbrella of protection across all of our data, independent of where people were in the world, we know it was secure. And that way, we could actually get on and operate as close to normal as we, as we could, as we can. And that way, we can keep adding performance to the car. So it was so fundamental to us during this period that I believe if we didn't have it, we wouldn't have the car we have today. And so, so I want to wrap up by coming to yourself. What are the, the, the differences or the learnings and the way in which we operate that you think we might take forward beyond the current circumstance? In an environment where um, IP is at the core of what we do, we would lose a big advantage if some of that would get lost or reach our competitors. And therefore, our security software and cybersecurity software is um, very complex backup base in the factory. Now, add to the equation that we actually had to move 
um, our engineers into remote places at home um, created a huge task of how can we provide a safe um, environment without the risk of losing any of the IP. And there, CrowdStrike uh, really moved heaven and earth, uh, provided us uh, with all the tools, with all the security that we as a high-tech organization need, and we couldn't have done that without uh, CrowdStrike's uh, software. Brilliant. Toto, thank you so much for joining us today. Rob, thank you for joining us as well. Thank Absolutely you. fascinating insights. And George, back to yourself. We're thrilled and grateful to play a role in the team's unbelievable success. It goes to show that extraordinary leadership finds a way to not only survive, but to thrive, even when confronted by extreme conditions. Like many organizations that had avoided going to the cloud, COVID left them no choice. They had to take the plunge and embrace this transformation, and they trusted CrowdStrike to keep them in their newly distributed workforce safe and secure. The cloud isn't some idea to consider for the future. It's today's reality. I want to make very important point here. All cloud is not created equal. We're seeing a real gulf emerging, and that's one that IT and security leaders need to take the time to understand. It's the growing divide between cloud native and cloud retrofit. I left McAfee nine years ago to start a new company because I saw this gap widening and I knew that the fossilized security technologies of the previous 20 years could never make the leap to the cloud. They were too invested in that old on-prem 1990s style of architecture. They would never abandon it, not completely, and so could never catch up. But when CrowdStrike came along and proved that there was a better way, at least their marketing departments got the message. They started putting pieces of their products up in the cloud, trying to give themselves and their platforms a little cloud flavor to make them seem more modern, more marketable. But it's one thing to take a decades old, fundamentally obsolete on-prem system and retrofit it with a few cloud capabilities. It's another thing entirely to build cloud native platform from scratch designed from the ground up to harness today's most advanced and innovative technologies. Our Chief Technology Officer, Mike Santonis, is going to join us in a minute from Sydney to talk more about what being cloud native really means and how not to be fooled by artificial cloud flavoring. I started CrowdStrike because I saw a sea change in the way security had to be delivered. A lot of us came up in an era where security was just about protecting endpoints and networks. For networks, you had firewalls, and for endpoints, you had multiple bloated software agents that required daily updates running on every single desktop and server. Then the world changed. The idea of maintaining a secure perimeter around your network stopped being effective or even feasible. Today, the endpoint is effectively your perimeter. It's a file server, a workstation, and a firewall all rolled into one. And the endpoints themselves have become more than just computers. They can be mobile or IoT devices like my watch or a doorbell or a machine on the factory floor. In fact, the word endpoint itself is becoming dated. In many cases, it's not even a physical device anymore. It can be a virtual machine, an instance, or a container. It can be here one minute and gone the next. A more modern term for these units is workloads. I define a workload as anything that combines compute, storage, and network connectivity. The point is, whatever it is, physical or virtual, and wherever it is, on a private network or out in the cloud, you have to protect it. This demands a new way of thinking about security. It's not just about protecting endpoints anymore. It's about protecting workloads. Endpoints are just a subset. Since CrowdStrike started, we had a vision for the cloud as the clear platform of choice for delivering the future of data security. This crazy year has made that vision a reality. What we created, a full featured security platform in the cloud and for the cloud, 
was actually made to order for the situation we find ourselves in today. We were built for this moment. And we are built for the future. We're built to scale, to stop breaches using the power of the cloud and the crowd. For more on what makes our platform so unique and perfectly attuned to the security needs of today's organizations, let me introduce our Chief Technology Officer, Mike Santonis. The Falcon platform is at the core of everything we do. To build a highly capable, scalable, and always on security platform that stops breaches, you need to follow the following core rules. You need the right data. You need somewhere to put the data. You need an endpoint that leverages that data. And finally, and often overlooked, you need the human expertise to power it all. I'm gonna walk you through how CrowdStrike solves this because it's one of the biggest reasons our customers trust us for their most sensitive workloads. What makes us different is how our systems work together. The endpoint agent, the cloud, and the threat graph, building a massive repository of data that keeps getting richer as our customers use it. The more work we do, the better and stronger the system inherently gets. Let's talk about the cloud native platform. But first, what does it mean to be cloud native? On premise? No. Hybrid? No. You can't be cloud native and offer an on-premise or a hybrid version of your solution. Cloud native means built in the cloud for the cloud. Cloud native means it works out of the box, and that's critical. Cloud native means the solution scales whether you have one workload or a million workloads. We offer one platform for all workloads. The cloud is the standard the world is running on right now. But now that the basics are covered about what makes the architecture, let me present the Falcon platform, a flexible, comprehensive security platform that gives you the power to build the strategic framework that fits your business best. Firstly, we anchor the Falcon platform around endpoint security. We combine endpoint protection leveraging cloud scale AI with deep link analytics to deliver best in class endpoint detection and response, next gen AV, device control and firewall management. Next in the platform is cloud security with uniquely placed offerings for cloud workload protection, cloud discovery and cloud security posture management. Next, Falcon delivers security and IT operation capabilities including IT hygiene and vulnerability management. And I believe a unique differentiator are the managed services that we offer. Our managed services portfolio includes managed endpoint protection and managed threat hunting. And finally, it's all enriched by world-class threat intelligence, which includes malware searching, sandbox analysis, that's fully integrated and automated, delivering deep context and predictive capability. Now let's talk about the next innovation, our unique lightweight agent that requires no reboot to install and to operate. Our core focus is to protect every one of our customers and every workload they use, every desktop, every server, every mobile and IoT device, data center, container, or cloud environment. No matter the type of device, where it may be, home, in the office, whether it's virtual, our focus is to protect every workload, regardless as to whether your workloads are on-premise, remote and off-premise, online or offline, as well as cloud container or hybrid deployed. You need the best visibility to be the best at detection. You need the best visibility to be the best at prevention. And our heritage comes from providing the best visibility, the best detection and the best platform Built, built for security response. We built a smart agent that processes data and makes decisions on the endpoint as well as in the cloud. This brings not only highly accurate real-time prevention and detection, but also intelligent filtering that determines which data should be made available to the analysts and under what conditions. This design is essential to assist with incident prioritization and to reduce alert fatigue 
whilst providing the privacy and compliance that organisations demand and require. Our lightweight agent is fully autonomous, can prevent without a cloud connection, with artificial intelligence and machine learning, to detect and prevent known and unknown malware using on-sensor and in the cloud capabilities. We pioneered behaviour-based indicators of attack, what we call IOAs, to prevent sophisticated fileless and malware-free attacks. We also combined exploit blocking to stop the execution and spread of threats via unpatched vulnerabilities. And we integrated threat intelligence for the prevention and blocking of activities known to be malicious. The final innovation I want to take you through and cover is the threat graph. Today, the threat graph ingests, indexes, and analyzes over 4 trillion events every week, from the vast array of CrowdStrike protected endpoints and workloads to identify sophisticated threats. The cloud is where we can store larger data sizes. We can do heavier computations. This includes the endpoint agent not having to do extra work locally if we have cloud data that's already available. The cloud vantage point allows us to combine data from multiple endpoints, as well as using various cloud and AI and machine learning models that can work together over larger data sets than they could on the sensor itself. This leverages the benefits of more storage, more diversity of data from various sources, and more compute power. We have on-sensor ML, but we have multiple AI and ML models in the cloud that are focused on various file types across different operating systems, as well as behavioral models that leverage the endpoint event data, which is a huge benefit to the users of the platform. Cloud techniques can be more rapidly deployed with minimal risk to the end user, allowing new detection and prevention models to de be deployed very, very quickly. And at CrowdStrike, we've used this approach since the initial design of the Falcon platform. But technology is only one part of the solution. Firstly, is Falcon Overwatch, a team of dedicated proactive threat hunters that work on your behalf as one of our managed service offerings. They constantly search the entire threat graph to proactively hunt for the most sophisticated threats in your environment, 24 by 7, 365 days a year. We work as an extension of your team to find stealthy threats and targeted attacks. Next is Falcon Complete. You manage the solution or you can leave it all to us. Our experts can provide a turnkey experience either via our Falcon Complete team or through our valued managed service partners. We can do the deployment, the management, the monitoring and provide the industry's first and only remote remediation service. And finally, let's talk about partnering with the best to bring you the best. I believe that we are the experts in our domain and we want to work with other experts in theirs and integrate their solutions onto our platform. You benefit from an integrated platform that allows you to focus on what's important, keeping your organisation safe whilst we work on the integration. The CrowdStrike store ecosystem continues to grow from patching to application segmentation, XDR, through to whitelisting and zero trust. We will continue to innovate to bring you leading solutions that work together, and you're gonna hear a whole lot more about this during the uh, conference. At this point, I'd love to say, but wait, there's more. And the reality is, there's a whole lot more. But I'm gonna pause and leave it to my colleague and the best chief product officer there is, Amal Kulkarni, to take you through the amazing innovation. First, back to you, George. Thanks, Mike. I'm extremely proud of what you and the team have created. And you heard him right about the size and scale of our threat graph. Today, we're announcing that we've reached a new milestone, four trillion events per week. Mike will be back in a bit to tell you more about where he's taking our platform next. But let me give you a little preview. Back when we had secure perimeters, or at least we thought we did, if you logged in with the right credentials, you had access to everything. If you believed that everything behind your perimeter was secure, that was fine, but sophisticated threat actors learned to penetrate the perimeter and breeze right through those traditional layered defenses. And once inside, they had free reign across your environment. 
And at the same time, users started moving away from secure corporate networks and into the cloud. It was clear that we needed a new way to protect sensitive data and resources in the post-perimeter world. We needed to protect endpoints and workloads from breaches. And we needed a new way to manage identity and restrict access to sensitive data and resources in our environments. During the IPO Roadshow, I had someone ask me what I was going to do after going public. You having a party? Turns out he was comparing me to another Silicon Valley CEO who right after his IPO disappeared for a month to celebrate. I said, no, this is the green flag, not the checkered flag. Doesn't mean we've won, so let's pop the champagne corks. It's just the start of the race. So I announced on the day of the IPO that I was embarking immediately on a 100 by 100 tour. Our head of sales, Mike Carpenter, and I set out to meet with 100 customers in 100 days. It made such a huge impact on us and our customers. We gathered so much knowledge from them. When the outbreak hit, we decided to do it again. Another 100 customers in 100 days. But this time, we did it on Zoom instead of an airplane. What we learned was that in the fog of war following the initial outbreak of COVID, CIOs and CISOs were mainly concerned with two things, endpoint and identity. CrowdStrike had their back when it came to protecting endpoints and workloads, but to some degree, identity was still a problem in need of a solution. Their networks had been turned inside out. They took tens of thousands of people out of the office, off their corporate networks, and sent them home. It was unprecedented, and organizations didn't know how to secure this new kind of environment. So just as we had to redefine what an endpoint is, we now need to redefine identity. It requires a whole new perspective. Instead of the old adage, trust but verify, we now say don't trust, just verify. Welcome to the world of zero trust. Zero trust is based on the principle of maintaining strict access controls to every resource in your environment and not trusting anyone or anything by default even those already granted access to your network. It's an important concept and a critical component of your security stack today. Here's a guy who knows a thing or two about securing the cloud. Steve Schmidt is the global CISO of Amazon Web Services. Let's hear what he has to say. A lot of people are familiar with the term zero trust network. Uh, one of the statements that, that I believe really, really strongly in is the traditional idea of a perimeter is dead. Now, we've all grown up in the in the world where you've got um, a sort of firewall at the front of your network and that's the protection boundary that you expect. We don't believe that's the case anymore. Anybody who's operating a, a large business at scale can't possibly believe that a perimeter is, is their significant protection interval. And what we try and do with our infrastructure and we encourage all of our customers to do is to shrink perimeters down to the smallest possible object. For example, a single data element should have a perimeter of control around it. And that kind of shrunken perimeter is critically important to the concept of a zero trust network. A zero trust network is the idea that you don't need to worry about the network interconnectivity between components of your infrastructure. Instead, you need to worry about the endpoints, the servers, and the data that reside on those, as well as the applications that serve up those data. CrowdStrike is critical to our ability to understand the devices that we own within our infrastructure and how our people are using Using those devices. You're going to hear more from Steve a little later in the program, but we are thrilled to have AWS as a customer, a partner, and a sponsor of Falcon. As we see it, today's zero trust model is only the beginning. Verifying user identity to control access is crucial. But what about the endpoints or workloads people are using to access your resources? Or the systems where those resources reside? Are they vulnerable to attack and exploitation? It's clear that for zero trust to be effective, it must be tightly integrated with endpoint and workload protection and response capabilities. It's another area where the Falcon platform and its single agent architecture provide a clear advantage for securing today's distributed workforce. We take the concept of zero trust even further by continuously comparing endpoint activity, context, and behavior to verify security at every level and every access point within your network. In this way, we can eliminate the risk of adversaries breaching your defenses, then moving laterally within your environment. 
This solves a huge problem and closes a massive hole in your security, one that conventional zero trust models can't address. As customers, you can rely on us and our partners to provide seamless technology, process, and services to keep your endpoints and workloads safe, no matter who or what is accessing them. Mike Santonis will be back later to say more about our plans for zero trust. As we close out 2020 and look forward to 2021, the stage is set for a massive global push forward for digital transformation of the enterprise, along with the security transformation to support it. One of our partners is putting itself at the forefront of that transformative wave. Here's Carmine DeCibio, global chairman and CEO of EY, formerly known as Ernst & Young. Hi, George. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you today, virtually at least. At EY, we focus on our purpose, which is building a better working world. Every day, our 300,000 people around the world are building a better working world for clients, for each other, and for society as a whole. An important part of this is how we help clients transform their business through data and technology. And while that's been important to our clients for years, the COVID crisis has accelerated their needs. Throughout 2020, organizations have been focused by necessity on the now, on getting through the crisis. But today, they're starting to look forward to what's next and to what's beyond. For many organizations, the future they're moving to is increasingly digital. They are rethinking the core of who they are, from the way they interact with customers and suppliers to the way they design and develop products. The opportunities for our clients in this increasingly digital world are only limited by their imagination, and we're thrilled to help them grasp those opportunities and transform their businesses. With every new opportunity comes new risks. However, we have to help our clients identify and manage them. That's why I'm so excited to announce today that EY and CrowdStrike have formed an alliance to bring CrowdStrike's cutting edge technology and approach to EY's clients, ensuring their digital transformations have security built in from the outset. Working together, I know that we can help our clients transform themselves for the future and doing so with the confidence that their digital assets and operations are secure. I know this is the start of a great relationship that will benefit EY, CrowdStrike, and most importantly, the clients we serve together. George, I look forward to seeing you again soon, and I hope the rest of Falcon goes great. Thanks, Carmine. I'm excited about what our two organizations can accomplish together. Now let's dive deeper. One of the things we set out to do with CrowdStrike was to reinvent the way security is delivered. By bringing it out of the data center and into the cloud, we accomplished something historic. But in a sense, we were also repeating history. It's the way Salesforce debuted in the cloud and blew away the previous market leader in CRM. It's also what Workday did in HR so well and how the service and support industry was transformed by ServiceNow. In each case, they displaced the incumbents by leveraging the power, scale, and economy of the cloud creating category-defining cloud platforms, a CRM cloud, an HR cloud, a service cloud. CrowdStrike applied that same disruptive strategy to create the security cloud. This isn't a new model. It's been building momentum since Salesforce was founded 20 years ago. But this story has never been so important or so timely. Our world has effectively moved to the cloud. It's now the way we work, the way we shop, the way we communicate, the way we live. We need a security cloud to protect that new way of life. Let me explain what I mean by a security cloud and what I think it means for you as a security and IT professional. When I say security cloud, I mean perhaps the largest single purpose repository of threat data in the world, processing four trillion security events per week. I mean the full capabilities of a purpose-built graph database, the kind that powers the Googles, Amazons, and Facebooks of the world. 
Our threat graph identifies patterns and detects emerging threats in a way that was never possible before. The security cloud also lets us take full advantage of artificial intelligence and machine learning. These technologies are only as effective as the size of the data set they're learning from. So only with a truly massive graph database can these technologies achieve their true promise. And only a multi-tenant cloud can support that much data. You can't do it on-prem or with a single tenant architecture. This is another area where CrowdStrike is light years ahead of the competition. Finally, the security cloud allows for community immunity. If a new threat is detected on any endpoint or workload anywhere, it's blocked. And every other workload connected to the security cloud is immediately inoculated in real time. That's the power of crowdsourcing and the crowd in CrowdStrike. The security cloud is what happens when and only when you architect a complete platform from the ground up to take maximum advantage of the cloud and the crowd. It's what we believe makes our security cloud unique and well beyond the reach of any other security provider now or in the future. I have one more customer I'd like to introduce you to. He's the CISO of a powerhouse global brand, one dedicated to helping us make our homes better and safer. He's not only one of the best CISOs in the business, he's also someone who cares deeply about everything we're talking about here today. So let's hear from Home Depot's Stephen Ward. We're living in unprecedented times right now that require cybersecurity teams to adapt to more virtual environments, to focus on more collaboration and the mental and physical health of our teams. We've had to work together with our businesses more now than we ever had before to make sure that our companies are doing what's best for our employees and our customers. The change isn't really new to our world. We've been dealing with rapid change for 20 years in the technology and security space. And dealing with that over the years prepares us for issues like this. Now more than ever, we've had to work together to solve problems. We've had to work harder with our own teams. We've had to work with others in our industry. And more importantly, we've had to work outside of our industries, cross industry to help one another. We've had to strengthen relationships with our strategic security partners like CrowdStrike. We expect the best from ourselves, but we also expect the best from them. And we're getting both. We've all heard that phrase, it's not a matter of if you get breached, it's when. And I've never really subscribed to that. Never heard an amazing leader or an incredible coach walk into a locker room before a season and say, it's not a matter of if we lose the Super Bowl, it's when. Those teams don't win. And I don't think anyone really subscribes to that. We wake up every day and we win. We have small wins, we have big wins. Every day we celebrate them, individually as teams and with our strategic security partners. Every day we win with those partners, partners just like CrowdStrike. So I wanna thank you for everything you do for your companies, for everything that you do for the industry. Please stay safe and please stay healthy during these times. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Despite everything that has occurred this year, I believe we've been presented with an amazing opportunity. As Winston Churchill said, never let a good crisis go to waste. This is your chance to modernize infrastructure and transform your organizations to meet the challenges that are coming. We want to help you do that, to support you and allow you to support the organizations, institutions, and most importantly, the people who are all counting on you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to outthink, out-architect, and out-innovate, not just our competition, but the adversaries that are targeting you every day. We will do that by providing the best products and services we possibly can, because as all of us discovered this last year, failure is not an option. Not for us, not for you. So today, the security cloud is expanding and getting even better. In a few minutes, Amal and Mike will be here to tell you exactly what we are introducing here at Falcon. We're bringing you new capabilities in the areas of cloud security, endpoint protection, identity management, threat intelligence, and beyond. We're continuing to deliver on our mission to stop breaches. 
It's essential to have an inspirational and aspirational mission. But you also need a guiding philosophy for how you carry out that mission. For us, it's this, do the right thing and above all, take care of the customer. If you do that, everything else will fall into place. By protecting you and your customers, we are together making this world a better and safer place. We're truly living in a world that is transforming from one day to the next. For your organization, that means digital transformation. And for everyone here in the audience today, it means a security transformation first. As you have seen today, our customers are doing exactly that. Cities like New York, automakers, and sports teams like Mercedes Formula One. Cloud providers like AWS, professional services providers like EY, retailers like Home Depot, and organizations like yours. We are proud to be your partner in this global security transformation. 